What's up and how's it going, Summoners? My name is Nathan Ng, and I miss you all so much. It's so good to be back. Speaking of back, we are here with 13.10 Sauce, and I hope that you're ready for those massive changes right in the middle of the year. New items, adjustments, buffs, basically a preseason. Are you ready? If not, don't worry, I'll guide you right through it. Before we start, I got something very important for you. We are giving away more than 11,000 RP every single patch. What do you have to do to get a chance at winning? It's easy, just enter following three simple steps. Click the link in the description, become a pro member for only $7.99 monthly, and lastly, comment your username right into the comment section below this video. You can learn more about our master classes and pro guides pro at the end of the video. The winner will be announced in our next rundown video. Now, let's talk about the champion buffs, and here we have a lot of ability power based scaling added to the game. First comes Ashan. His passive ability gains an ability power scaling, and his shielding has been slightly nerfed for the early and mid game. Next to this, his Avengerang's movement speed bonus is getting an ability power scaling for its movement speed buff. Next up is Callista, and here we have a change to her rend. The slow, overall damage, and damage per sec will now have an added ability power scaling. If you're wondering why this is happening, you should stay tuned because you'll go crazy when you see the item changes later on into this video. In a sense, her pullout game is getting changed. <laughs> Kindred is also receiving some buffs in the form of AP scalings, and here it's on Wolf's Frenzy's damage and on Mounting Dread's slow. The last ADC that receives an AP scaling is Vayne. Her tumble gets a 50% ability power scaling, which isn't even that low if you consider that is her most used ability. For Nika, we have some buffs in the jungle department and some juice for her ultimate. Riot wants to increase Nika's play rate in the jungle and therefore Blooming Burst and Shapeshifter will now deal even more damage to monsters. With the changes to her ultimate's power, Nico lost out on quite a bit of damage and Riot took notice of that. She's getting a 20% increase in its ability power scaling, reliable and powerful. With the champion buffs wrapped up, it's now time to explore the various item changes and here we'll start with Ginsu's Rage Blade. For reference, we'll show you Orn's upgraded version of the item to showcase the differences. Ginsu's Rage Blade is now a mythic tier hybrid on hit item. It grants you both AD and AP, and its mythic passive provides you with a percentage armor and magic penetration. Can you already imagine what is going to happen with this and an armor pen item? You'll actually be mind blown since you'll see what Riot is going to do to Lord Doms. Varus will surely not just become absolutely broken. With the change to the item also comes a change to its component Rage Knife. Its price is increased. It gets a new on hit effect called Wrath and a stacking attack speed buff. Bloodthirster is now getting a fundamental rework in its identity. Rather than providing you with a shield, it's now doubling down in terms of dealing damage. While you're untouched, like me for <laughs> the past four years, it doesn't matter, uh, that's not important. Anyway, while you're untouched or more accurately set above 50% HP, you'll gain a massive amount of extra AD. It's no longer about decreasing the chances of being one shot, it's more about killing. I cannot wait to see Draven with this item, as long as he's on my team. This change is primarily linked to Immortal Shield Bow turning into a legendary item. Its cost is reduced and the build path slightly adjusted and the attack speed is removed entirely and it's linked to its new passive. Previously, you gained bonus attack damage as a shield was triggered, but with this iteration, you'll receive a big amount of attack speed. As the item is getting cheaper, its lifeline shield strength is also getting adjusted and lowered to fit its price tag. Riot has also provided some extra info that they don't think that shield bow should be bought as your first item as its shield doesn't increase until level 12. Important note by the way, Noon Quiver doesn't build into any mythics anymore, so don't mess up your inventories. The item that used to be the goal of every ADC build is now turning into a mythic item. We're talking about Infinity Edge. How does it function? You crit harder and all your legendary items grant you 5 extra AD. No more condition when it comes to crit chances thresholds, just raw damage. For Gale Force, we're seeing changes in its build path, nerfed to its attack damage and attack speed, but an addition of 7% movement speed. With the item getting movement speed as a stat, the old mythic bonus is getting removed and being replaced by flat AD. Its active is also getting a change. The damage scales with missing HP and your crit chance. Another change many Trinity Force users will be happy about is a component change. Hearthbound Axe is getting a little bit more expensive, but gets a better build path and more AD. This item is now actually an item that you look forward to and not something that you regret having to buy. Similar in that regard comes a change to Kerchise's Shard. I had to Google how to pronounce it, by the way. <laughs> anyway, energized items aren't known for the frequent big hits and therefore Riot thought it's a good idea to exchange the item's attack speed for attack damage. 
This change comes to other energized items, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. To make sure the item stays in line and isn't too strong for a component, its passive jolt is slightly reduced. The next energized item that's benefiting from this change is a rapid fire cannon. Its goal is to hit enemies very hard once in a while, and therefore high attack speed values aren't mandatory. The item's price is upped by 500 gold. It gets a different build path, loses 20% of its attack speed, but gains 30 AD. In addition to this, rather than its old passive, the new adjusted one scales with levels. It's time to be happy guys, we got our static shiv back and this item is an absolute banger, as the kids say these days. Similar to rapid fire cannon, this item will also receive attack damage as its core stat. However, the most insane thing about this item is its unique passive electroshock. Every time you're energized, your next auto attack will deal bonus damage and chain up to 12 targets while dealing bonus damage to minions. Any wave clear demons out there? And also, don't forget, depending on the context, this will also be decent chip damage to enemy champions if they have to posture around objectives and you're having a staring contest. I'm also really curious to see if this item could help Vayne gain a tool for Wave Claire so she isn't stuck clearing waves for literally an eternity. The last energized item that's getting a change is Storm Razor. Here, we're seeing an increase in its price, change in build path, buff to AD, and an adjustment to its passive bolt. Energized attacks now scale with total AD and AP, while the attack slow loses power, but also the slow duration is doubled. This item, in combination with static and rapid fire, could decide to fight before it even started. Trisano or Caitlyn hitting you with this will send you right back into the fountain. The next highlighted change is coming in for Kraken Slayer. It moves from Mythic to Legendary Terror and gets some adjustments across the board to match its new prize tag. The newest change to this item though is the most broken one. If you consistently hit the same target over and over again, you'll end up to 100% increased damage to that target on Kraken's on-hit effect. As it scales with your total AD, fits into Ginsu's range category, and is about attacking fast, you can already imagine that Vayne could fall in love with this item. So many candidates for so many potential changes. We're all gonna have to have a field day of testing and exploring all the new options. To grant you a brief moment of respite, let's talk about some simple changes that are easy to process. Macarial Scimitar gains 10 magic resistance, and Mortal Reminder gains 5 extra attack damage. Merc Sim simply was not bought often enough. And Mortal just feels significantly weaker than Lord Dom's, especially when you see what they did to the item. Navori Quick Blades is also stepping up into the Mythic tier. Whereas Infinity Edge focuses on increasing critical strike damage, Quick Blades is about enhancing ability damage depending on your critical strike chance. With those items now being Mythic tier, I'm really curious to see what Gangplank mains are going to come up with. For Phantom Dancer, we're also seeing a slight adjustment. Its price is being upped by 200 gold, its attack speed by 5%, and the Hearthbound Axe becomes part of its build path. First, let's talk about the exciting change to Runin's Hurricane before we take a look at the smaller changes to its component, Recurve Bow. Runin's is getting more expensive, gets a new build path, less attack speed, does magic damage on it, and the extra bolt's damage is increased by 10%. Its component Recurve Bow, however, is getting cheaper as it loses a dagger in its build path. Moreover, it also loses 10% attack speed and its on-hit damage is converted from physical to magical damage on hit. An item that everybody has always complained about, and in reality wasn't a good item in most situations, is the Collector. To make this item more appealing, they're giving it 6 extra lethality. The idea behind this is to make the item more attractive for hyper snowballing champions to solidify leads. Is this going to be enough with the other items that we're seeing in this patch? I cannot believe so. As the ADC role is a big winner in this patch so far, others will suffer for their sins. Zeal is getting more expensive and less potent in regards to its stats. The silver lining is that the passive isn't unique anymore, and you can potentially stack up a few of those. To be fair though, this brings back bad memories thinking of new new players having a few of those items in the inventories once it got a bit angry. With crit items wrapped up, let's talk and move over to assassin items. Dust Blade no longer empowers your next basic attack, nor does it turn you invisible after killing somebody. Now you deal up to 15% bonus damage on the enemy's missing HP, and you can become untargetable after any target you touch in the past 3 seconds dies. Luckily, this doesn't work on structures for already existing projectiles, or we'd have another Akali flashback. Prowler's Claw is no longer a mythic and inactive item, and now functions similarly to Sudden Impact. It loses a lot of its stats for this, but the cooldown for its passive is rather low compared to its previous cooldown. The biggest issue with this item is the fact that the item now lost its jail-free card, and you cannot use it as a utility item anymore to either secure a kill or get out of a risky situation. Not to mention that poor Scion players will lose quite a few tears over this. As Prowlers was kicked from the Mythic tier, Yumus is now taking its place. 
Yumus is getting more expensive and also gains more AD, haste, and bonus movement speed. But the real deal about this item is now its new passive, move faster. And once you have reached maximum stats, you gain extra lethality. Blue Kane would like to say hello to you, or I guess goodbye. The next role that is going to be receiving some item changes is the support role, and here we have a lot of changes to item pricing. The support role often suffers from having a lower economy than other roles and therefore an adjustment was in order. We'll start with Abyssal Mask. The item's price is massively lowered with a change in its build path and stats. You have less health now, more magic resist, but the item's effect is still the same as before. Arden Sensor also follows in the same fashion. Lowered in price, lowered in personal stats, but more for your allies. Important here to mention is that movement speed is one of the most valuable stats as it allows you to travel the map faster and go for more proactive plays. Do you by the way remember the Season 7 Ardent Rush meta? This low-key reminds me of this in the way that we're trying to push for supportive item choices. Obviously, this doesn't even come close to the past, but it's just something to be mindful of as to what they intend to do for the support role. The next change in similar fashion also comes for Chemtech Putrefire and Staff of Flowing Water. Less expensive, adjusted build path, and less selfish stats, with the exception of Sapha Flowing Water's bonus movement speed. Before we jump deeper into the past, we need to check out two components called Chalice of Blessing and Life Well Pendant. Chalice is a component for enchanters that features health, mana regeneration, and extra health regen. Life Well Pendant is a component intended for tanky supports. This item provides you with health, armor, and ability haste. Reminiscing about old times often comes with a little bit of sadness about the fact that those times are over. But what about old things coming back to life? With Echo's Helia, we have an item that feeds into the idea of Athene's Unholy Grail. Dealing damage empowers your healing and shielding to heal even more while dealing extra damage to enemies. Your champion is capable of dealing damage consistently while also having access to load cooldowns for healing and shielding, then this item is going to be nuts. Even though the interaction with Ares sounds pretty scary when you think about it, that's a lot of burst damage and healing. Needless to say, it's a mythic item, and it's basically a replacement for Mandate, as this item was pushed down to a legendary item. Mandate stats have been slightly adjusted, but now this item is available for all the other champions that weren't willing to offer up their mythic slot. With Life Well Pendant in the game, we're also seeing a lot of changes to Even Shroud, Zeke's, Knight's Vow, and Locket's Prize Tag and Build Path. Moreover, some of these item stats are getting changed. Knight's Vow loses some health, haste, and life regen, but gains armor. Its unique effect isn't linked to post mitigation damage anymore, but to pre mitigated damage. Zeke also loses health and haste, but gains some armor. For Locket, we're getting a slight change for its active. Devotion as its shield strength is getting buffed. To remove some power from jungle tanks and add some options for other tanky support choices, Radiant Virtue is losing some of its stats, becomes cheaper, and gets a new build path. The item will be overall weaker than before, making it a less dominant choice unless you want to have as unique passive as fast as possible to go for coordinated teamfights. For enchanters that like being a little bit tankier even without magic damage in the game, Mikhail becomes a better option now. The item receives a new build path, 250 health, and the healing of the item's active is also increased. Another change for enchanters comes to Moonstone Renewer. Whereas Echoes of Hilly promotes an active and aggressive playstyle, Moonstone is your go-to choice when you don't want to get too close to the action. The item becomes cheaper, gets a new build path, and less ability power and two brand new passives. Your healing or shielding chains to the nearest ally and your legendary items grant extra haste. Quite the interesting item for champions such as Sona. As you've already seen, items featuring Chalice of Harmony got a new passive added to them. Base health regen is increased for every single base mana regen. The same thing is happening to redemption amongst other things. Obviously, a new build path is added, a tiny increase in its health stat, and a buff to its active healing. Everything for the team. Don't forget, depending on your economy as a tank and your overall role, you might also just pick this one up as it provides high value for your team. Another super high value item that has been one of the most satisfactory items for the support role is Shirelia's. It's a great item, maybe a little bit too great, and therefore receives a nerf for its overall ability power and movement speed passive on shielding and healing. Less overbearing, still your go-to choice when mobility is key. Before we end the support segment, we need to talk about two items, the Watchful and Vigilant Wardstone. The first receives buffs for its mana regeneration and gets a unique passive that increases bonus health, attack damage, ability power, and haste. The latter is no longer automatically upgraded, but purchased with gold. It has better improved base stats and a better unique passive. The idea behind this item was to give the support role a valuable gold sink as you hit the later stages of the game without losing access to control wards. With all the complex changes done, we can now move over to some easier item changes. 
Divine Sunderer now scales stronger with your base AD compared to the enemy's maximum HP. Fimble Winter's passive no longer consumes a user's mana. Force of Nature is getting murdered. It's getting cheaper. A little bit more HP, less magic resist, but loses its multiplicative magic damage reduction for the sake of gaining bonus magic resist. I see Gensu dealing magic damage and then a change to Force of Nature. That's quite convenient for the ADC role. It's quite beneficial as well when it comes to the buff to Lord Dominic's regards. Its Giant Slayer passive now also increases magic damage based on the maximum health difference. I guess ADCs are too weak or something. I mean, this is an interesting change and maybe we'll even see the mage being able to pick up this item under certain and weird conditions. Especially if you think about Leandry's Anguish in combination with this. Core Drinker is also getting cheaper and its mythic health bonus is also being increased. Holebreaker is more expensive, has a different build path and better stats including more movement and AD. Lost Chapter is lowered in price as it receives a change in its build path. If you are running Futures Market and depending on reset timers, you're very likely to get an easier laning phase with this item to the point where it could just be borderline broken. Many champions that are depending on this item already run Futures Market for that purpose, so I'm curious to see how that might upset the base timers and matchups. Mages will also be quite happy to hear that Rabidon's Death Cap is getting a buff to its passive, more AP for everyone. Ma is getting cheaper, receives a nurse's lifeline cooldown, and lifeline duration is halved. This basically opens up windows earlier and doesn't make you stagnant for ages before you can go for another play. An update to Seric's Gage makes sure that you can even play in the first place. As the lifeline triggers, you can finally gain an increased size and tenacity again. On the other hand, Stridebreaker is getting 1080 to buff it to a similar power level as Divine. Trinity Force, on the other hand, gets a massive change. The stack duration is increased from 3 to 5 seconds, and its AD and attack speed both go up by 5. This puts it on par with Conqueror's Duration and opens up different trading patterns and windows. With that being said, we've gone through all the item changes, buffs, nerfs, and adjustments, and now can look at the systematic changes. You'll regenerate more mana per tick in the fountain. This leads to less inactivity in the base and more active playtime. Sound alone, this isn't as significant. But with a combination of the Lost Chapter buff, the idea of maximizing your time spent on the map will not diminish. Similar to that, Home Guard will activate at minute 14 compared to 20. Blast Cones will have their spawn timer pushed from 9 minutes to 9.30 from 5 to 5.30 to reduce ganking opportunities. Except for the first wave and until 14 minutes, mid lane minions will meet at the same time as the side lane minions. The scarier change, however, comes in minion AI, or just, I guess, AI in a whole is just becoming scarier, but that's beside the point. Anyway, as a minion is already attacking a tower, it will not re-aggro even if there's a fight happening close to it. This is a major change that is life and death issue for a lot of matchups. I don't believe that this will stick as the outcry will be too severe. Damage to turrets is also getting adjusted. You're no longer at a disadvantage when you're also running a hybrid build and you have to choose to take down towers. Champions now deal their total AD and 60% of their ability power to turrets. At the same time, however, it's going to be harder to take down turret platings as the rushdown resistances are getting increased. And finally, for all the top laners, a small ray of hope. Your teleport will be unleashed at minute 10 compared to 14, but your teleport cooldown now scales with levels. The last systematic changes come to trinkets, and here we have the Farsight Altercation and the Oracle Lens. Farsight will now provide vision over walls and ping enemy locations that are revealed on the map. If that wasn't enough, it would automatically ping an enemy champion, and that champion isn't seen for the first time within its range. Afterwards, it will increase its vision range to 800 before self-destructing. This lowers the power of littering the enemy jungle with farsight altercations, but doesn't hurt when you're spamming them to your own jungle to make use of its cooldown. It's an interesting idea to give awareness that many high yield players will be a little bit confused about. After all, developing map awareness is a skill that contributes to being and becoming a better player. In line with this comes a change to Oracle Lens. The item will now have two charges and therefore an increased cooldown and a lower duration. It also grants two extra seconds of vision on that ward that was spotted and hit as the Oracle Lens runs out. For those of you that like ARAM like me, there's a few adjustments as well. Nar now deals 105% damage, as well as Gragas and Kled. Evelyn now deals 5% less damage, Milio shields and heals for 5% less than before, while Shen takes 5% extra damage. The Mythic Shop rotation will not refresh for a while now, and you'll be able to buy Prestige Phoenix Mancer Zaya and Prestige Firecracker Vane. The next Mythic Chroma will appear on patch 13.12. Other skins that you can look forward to are Snow Moon Ari, Morgana, and Varus. They look absolutely stunning. If you're struggling with any details of this patch or generally want to improve your gameplay, you should check out one of our 500 master classes and courses over at ProGuides.com. 
You can select individual sessions or just check out one of our many featured pros to help you get to the next level. There's also the cherry on top, the giveaway I mentioned earlier. All you have to do is follow those three simple steps. What are you waiting for? Join the Pro Guides Pro program. That wraps up today's video and yeah, that was a lot of info to digest and what a video to come back to. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.